This is a Pro One. It sounds like a Pro One as well. Mine is running Selfish OS. Uh, this is a community port. Uh, that means that we cannot buy a full paid license uh, and we cannot use uh, or buy um, the, the proprietary bits that would come with Selfish uh, with a full license. Or at least running them on the Pro One wouldn't be legal. But other than that, everything works out of the box with remarkable performance. It might be even faster than official devices because we have better specifications on the Pro One than on official devices. And really the porters did a very good job uh, on that system. So I could unlock it using my code, but we even have a fingerprint reader, an open source one, it works well. Uh, and this is uh, an overview of the multitasking view in Selfish with a couple uh, native applications running, terminal emulator, web browser, a system monitoring application, and so on. Uh, we can maximize them this way. Uh, I could also uh, move them around by uh, dragging and dropping them. I can close one using the cross here after a long press, but if I want to be quicker, I could also close them just, uh, just using a gesture. And I set my system so that everything is locked into landscape orientation whenever the keyboard is open, because I don't want to, my applications to be moving around with uh, any unintentional moves uh, of my phone, and if I want to lay down on a couch, uh, I can still use it in uh, landscape. But of course, if you want to use it like a regular mobile phone, you can close the keyboard and then it's back to uh, dynamic orientation. You could lock it into portrait if you wanted to, that's really up to you. So if we go in the web browser, I can show you what the native uh, virtual keyboard looks like. Um, it's very simple. You have multiple layouts that you can choose from. This is just a small selection here, but there are others. And it works, it works very well uh, in portrait, but as soon as you go into landscape mode, of course, it's taking too much space and you don't have enough left for showing the content. Uh, even if you use a simpler layout like that one, that's, that's too much space eaten by the keyboard to my liking. And that's really where the hardware keyboard shines because as soon as you open it, Selfish will detect that and it will hide your virtual keyboard and show you um, the content on the full screen again. Uh, I can decrease the brightness a little. You can even um, scroll down and up using the arrow keys if you want. So that's for Selfish uh, native applications, but the thing is on Selfish we also have support for Linux containers. If you're not familiar with Linux containers, it's a little bit like virtual machines, except there's no virtualization involved. So that means better performance and also less um, resource usage. Uh, we, that's really um, Linux distributions uh, running in containers, just like virtual machines, really, uh, alongside your native applications and within your main operating system. So we have a container manager application that's a pre-release, but it's already available on GitHub. I am not the developer, I'm just a tester. And uh, these are the containers that I already installed. We could create a new one, uh, set a name for it. Let's say, for example, Debian container number three. Uh, we could select the architecture we want, the distribution. So here it would be Debian, where is it? Debian, but you saw that there are many distributions available. They won't work all out of the, bo of the box at the moment because the installation scripts in these applications are only made for Debian. So it might work for Debian, for Debian-based uh, distributions, and for the other distributions like Arch, for example, it will require a little work. But it will work, you just have to edit the, the installation scripts to adapt everything to the distribution you want. So we could uh, install a window manager, which by default would be XFCE, or we could skip that and just download it and use it only in the terminal. Uh, I won't download it because I don't have a very good uh, connection. It would be too long to show in the video. And I already have some containers already set up. So before I demonstrate them, uh, you have to know that there won't be any hardware decoding in containers. It works in native Selfish uh, applications, but not in containers. So you won't be using containers for gaming, for example. Uh, the performance will still be enough for watching videos. Uh, I, will, I will show you a video from YouTube in a moment. There's also no video out, uh, which would be very convenient, of course, because you have a full Linux uh, distribution, desktop distribution on your phone. So if you could plug an uh, USB-C uh, to HDMI cable, then you could really use that as a laptop uh, and plug it in a TV in the hotel room, for example. Um, 
the Pro One has hardware support for that. The, the issue is with Selfish. There's no, there's no support for video out on Selfish yet. Some people have started investigating that, so hopefully we will get that working one day. But it's just community effort, so we don't know if that will work yet. Uh, hopefully, yes. Uh, also, the file system in your containers is contained, so it won't be interacting uh, with your host file system unless you want it to. So, for example, you can mount your host file system, the phone one, selfish one, inside Debian or Kali here, and that means that if I take a picture using the camera on that phone, I can edit it in the container using GIMP, or I can send it using the Telegram desktop application, for example. But it's really up to you. You don't, you don't have to make them communicate if you don't want that. So I will start Kali, uh, which is what you would see after a fresh install. I didn't customize anything in that one, so you will see XFC, the way it looks after I hit accept when creating a new container. Um, the UI will be small because I didn't adjust it, but you can adjust it, you will see that. So I start a next session. I could also just start attach here. Uh, what it will do is it would open a new terminal here but the terminal would be inside the Kali root file system uh, and you would have two different window, uh, terminal windows. Uh, but we will start the next session. So I go back to multitask view because I want you to see that it's opened a new window and if I click on it, it's already booted. It really just took a few seconds um, and it's already responsive. You don't have to wait any longer to use it. Uh, there's not much I can show in Kali because I didn't install any software, but I can uh, show you the file system, the file manager, sorry. You can move the windows around and you can see that it's a little bit uh, choppy here. That's because there's no hardware acceleration, but it's not, uh, it's, I think it's still okay to be usable. Um, of course, I highly recommend that you go into the settings uh, here and then X settings uh, where you have all your XFC um, uh, configuration and you can change the DPI, you can change the font scaling, you can also scale up the whole uh, windows uh, up to two times I think, uh, which would be very usable for touch uh, for, for typing tapping with the with the fingers. And uh, I also highly recommend that you set some key bindings to manipulate your windows because even when the UI will be bigger with bigger buttons, it will still be inconvenient to lift your hand all the time to manipulate window. no one, windows. No one wants to do that. Um, while if you have key bindings, you could uh, tile windows, you could maximize them, minimize them, close them, uh, move them around, resize them just using the keyboard and with, without uh, ever lifting your hand from, uh, from the keyboard. So what's cool is that we have this full Linux distribution running in Selfish and Selfish applications are still there. They are still working smoothly. There's no issue whatsoever. And we have full Linux distribution here. So I will close that one. I just closed X here, but you can see that uh, the background is still running. The process is still running in the background. So I have to stop it. And then I will show another distribution that I did configure to my liking. And I installed a lot of software on that one, but it starts very fast as well. Uh, if I start the next session, you will see that is uh, quite quick. And here we go, it's already ready to use. So I can start my application menu, that's Rofi here. And I could, uh, I don't know, I could start maybe Darktable, for example. Uh, not that you would use that very often on a phone if you don't have video out, but I don't know, if you need to edit something and you don't have a laptop, that could work. It started quickly, I think. Um, and so I will close it and I will also show that um, this uh, container is not using XFC. This time I'm using i3, which is a tiling window manager. And that means that I can use the keyboard for virtually anything. I can manipulate my windows in every possible way uh, using the, the keyboard. I can uh, start um, a terminal, for example, using just the modifier here plus return. This is what I set. We could use something else. And if I run new fetch in that, you will see that we are indeed running Debian here. And I can still reduce it and go back to selfish uh, native applications. 
So I can also, since it's a tiling wind, uh, window manager, I can start another terminal and it will split the screen in two halves and put one terminal emulator on, which, on each half. And if I keep going on starting new terminals, and it will continue splitting uh, the remaining space uh, all the time. I can close them with uh, key bindings as well. I can also rearrange the windows if I want them to be uh, arranged uh, with the um, uh, vertical, uh, sorry, horizontal layout. I can do that as well using this key binding here. Uh, I could also set them to be floating windows, for example, that one. So that means that it will always be on top even if I do something in another terminal or any other application like that table, I would still have my, my terminal here on top. Uh, and you could uh, make it smaller if you want and really have a small terminal uh, overlay everywhere on your, on your desktop. Uh, and then I will put it back to... No, I just put another one to floating and I will put that one back to uh, tiling mode. Um, so this is one workspace, but you don't have to have all your windows on the same workspace. In i3, you can have uh, multiple workspaces. Let's say this one is for terminals. I could start a new uh, workspace where I will open Firefox. It will take a few seconds to start up because I have many tabs open. Um, but here we go. I have all my tabs here. They are still loading. Um, some of them might be already loaded, I don't know. For example, this is uh, Reddit. You see that the scrolling is smooth. And I can change tabs using uh, my UI. This is my custom UI. It's really desktop Firefox. It's just that I, I changed the UI for it uh, for, to make it more convenient for thumb uh, typing. That way I have my thumbs on the keyboard and I just have to lift one to change tabs here. Uh, I just didn't want to have my tabs on top and to lift my hand all the time to change them. And I did that, actually I can show you that I did the same on my uh, computer. Um, so this is Firefox here and this is the same, you can see that I have my tabs here on the left. I just find it convenient because I can have uh, longer tab names uh, using this, uh, this customization. Also, I can show you also that the Rofi menu is the same on my computer. Uh, so really, I'm not lost when I'm using my container. Everything is the same. It is on my desktop computer. We go back to the browser on the, on the phone. That means I can change my tabs using the UI and my thumb, but I could also change them using some key bindings that I set. Um, I can also... Um, I can show you that I have also my um, Firefox add-ons installed because it's a desktop version, so there's no limitation whatsoever. I have Tamper Monkey, I have a uBlock Origin, and I can I can close a tab using Ctrl plus W. I could start a new tab also using Ctrl T and search for, for example, this other handheld device, which is the GPD Micro PC, and we will see the video results and start one. And it's smooth. It might be dropping a few frames, but I don't think that's noticeable. And even in full screen, um, I don't really see it. I know that it's dropping frames in full screen, but I don't really see it. I think it's okay for video watching. Um, we could also copy the address of that video and load it in MPV. That means that I can close that tab now and I have a key binding to start MPV with the address that I used, that I put in my clipboard. So now I can still continue browsing all my tabs and keep an eye on the video. I could put it in a smaller size as well if I want to, uh, to have more space for my, uh, for my web browser. And I can move this floating window in a corner. Uh, it will be um, true for every workspace. For example, if I start another workspace and I start a LibreOffice writer on that workspace, I still have my uh, my uh, MPV window on the top. I could open some document. And here we go. Uh, the pictures at the top are too large, but that's just an issue in the document, not in the container. I can, 
I can edit the file. On average, I have 50, 50 words per minute. I'm typing at 50 words per minute on that keyboard. Uh, very good accuracy, there's no typos. Um, it's convenient to use. I don't uh, really feel like it's a pain to type on that. Um, I can multitask also and start a spreadsheet, for example, and type some numbers, and then the sum of these numbers, and that's it. So it's not so small. Um, at the distance I'm using the phone, I can read it very easily. Um, and you could also, of course, increase the size. You can you can also adjust the DPI um, in um, in in, uh, in i3. You can change the font size. You can also change the cursor size. Uh, and all the key bindings uh, in LibreOffice are working as usual. Uh, italics, underline. Um, you can copy something, cut something, sorry, and paste it several times. Um, so really it works well, and I can still go back to my uh, web browsing. Uh, I could also dock that on one side, put it in a smaller size, and under it I could start uh, some uh, monitoring uh, desktop uh, terminal application, for example, which can put a little bigger, and that's it. So you keep an eye on your video, but you're doing some other stuff uh, on the side. So I will quit it now. Um, I could also show you that we can use um, the GIMP. In which I can open um, my pictures. Uh, let's check the last one. So this one is... Uh, that's not from the camera of, the, of the, the phone, but I can still edit it. I can uh, zoom in if I want to. Um, it's not going to be as convenient as a full keyboard and a mouse, but if you need to edit something on the go, that's working fine. So that's what I wanted to show you about i3. I could also show you a file manager as well in the terminal, because I think with the keyboard, the terminal file manager is very convenient. And you can see that we have an image preview here of our screenshots. Um, it's a bit slow here because it's running in Kitty terminal and Kitty is a terminal that's using the GPU acceleration. And since we don't have hardware acceleration, uh, it's lagging a little behind here. But I could also start this file manager in, uh, in another terminal without hardware acceleration. And here now it's much smoother and it's much more reactive uh, and we can use different contexts it's just like uh, tabs in uh, in a regular file manager but I could also of course use um, I don't know uh, Nemo or is it Nautilus or is it file yeah file manager and it's here now alongside the terminal one I tend to prefer the terminal one so that's it um, what can I tell you more? Um, you might think that there's no point in using that um, if you don't have a pro one and you don't have a hardware keyboard. But in fact, um, you can start your terminals with these advanced controls here and you can run onboard. And onboard, if I start it here, but you could do it from the Selfish Containers uh, applications, it will, it will start a small icon here at the bottom of the screen, which you can move around. Uh, and when you click on it, it's opening a virtual keyboard in Linux. And you don't need your hardware keyboard anymore. Um, and since it has, it has all the modifiers plus digits, you can still use your i3 key bindings to control your workspaces, your windows. Uh, you can hide it quite easily and it's responsive, so you can start it again, you can configure different uh, layouts. For example, this is a nightshade um, layout theme that I use because it's uh, not too bright, so it's cool uh, in, in night, uh, during the night. But you have a colorful one, for example, here, typist. If you are a Model M fan, 
you can have the modem on your phone. And it also supports uh, long presses and keys to show some uh, special characters. So all in all, I think it's a very good alternative to, to a hardware keyboard. Of course, if I add only that, I would probably still do my web browsing using the container. I might still be doing my emailing as well using the container, but uh, I would spend uh, less time in the container that I'm doing currently because the keyboard, the hardware keyboard is really a game changer. I tap faster, I don't need to look at my fingers, uh, and it's just uh, better feedback overall. So I hope you like it. Uh, and that you would be interested in these selfish containers, either on the Pro One, which is really a winner combination, or on any other selfish device. I could maybe say that on other selfish device, uh, devices, the containers might not work out of the box, because there are some kernel requirements. Works on the Pro One, works on a couple other devices, but if yours doesn't have the kernel modules enabled by default, you might have to recompile the kernel. Uh, so just go check out on the GitHub page of Selfish Containers and you will see if your device works. And regarding um, battery usage, um, I usually start my container as soon as I boot Selfish and I leave it running all the day. I don't stop it once I'm done. So if I if I am done with my Selfish Containers, I put it I put the phone back in my pocket and then it's ready to uh, I can take it back where I left it. And I don't want to to close anything. I want to have my web browser still ready. I don't want to load all my tabs again. And since the CPU use and the memory use is not so huge, it's not a very big hit on performance. I can still do, I can still use the native applications with no issue, despite this full Linux distribution running here uh, in the container. And again, remember that this is, it might look small on camera, but uh, at the distance I'm using my phone, it's pretty legible for me, and this is just my setting. You could increase the size of the polybar on the top. You could decrease the DPI to have everything scaled a little bit bigger. You can also change the font size, the cursor size. It's just a couple uh, configuration files that you can change. For example, this is uh, my configuration for i3, uh, where I can see all my keybinds, and there's also some, uh, some settings uh, that you can adjust in there. So that's it. Uh, I hope you like it and I hope you will uh, find it an interesting uh, use for the Pro One.